I worked with Daniel for 10 years. Daniel, how has it been to work with me for 10 years? It must be a nightmare. No, no. no, but it has been like ups and downs, a lot of training and yeah. bad sessions, good sessions. Yeah, but uh, more than enough. I, I would understand if he was tired of me, because I'm pretty tired of myself. <laughs> uh, but to be able to work so closely, we have to be friends, we have to like each other. And in one way or another, I think we do. Ten years, approximately 300 days a year, we train six to ten sessions each week. One and a half to two hours per session, a lot of times down to one hour in the summer. Throws between eight and nine thousand discus throws a year. Three thousand days, four thousand five hundred session, nine thousand hours, and eighty to ninety thousand discus throws. For ten years, you have to be crazy to do it, but it has been fun. When I met this guy, I made a goal. I had to know what's the capacity and what is required to make this guy good. Because I told eight, eight years earlier, when I had gotten him, he's going to be the best in the world. I told people that eight hours in front. And I built it on a goal to be the best. And I tried to find out what requirements are done, are needed, and what capacity does it have. My message to young Stoll, when he was young, was to throw as much as possible, get as much horsepower as possible, train the situation mentally, I sent him to every day and meet that there was when he was young, uh, I think to 13 countries or something the first year. His mom thought I was crazy. Um, you have to have an organization, you have to believe in me, never make any excuses. Okay, that comes from Al Erte, that one four hour to go some discus. Never make any excuses. He did it once in 10 years. He really didn't. He told me, I said, Coach, I threw a PB in a shot put. I know that you don't want to hear it, but it was pouring rain. And I said, congratulations, you, sh you should have skipped the rain part. That's the only time this complain. I do my work, and he does his. And you don't complain. We are in this together. And I don't complain either. You have to enjoy it. We have to have fun, we go to cafes and we drink coffee and we have fun, we laugh, we tell stories, we are very different. He is the funny guy and I'm the boring guy. And we somehow click. It's really important. Training, planning, principles. We throw 50% discus, we lift 50%. We throw always discus before lifting. We work on the start 95% of the time. Because if you don't do the start right, you don't do the rest right. Twice a week on each exercise muscle group, regular horsepower in the weight room. System stall. How is it? It's based on four week cycles. Why is that? Pierre can't. It's a weekly schedule at home. Two throwings, two, two, uh, two times a day on Monday and Tuesday, once on Wednesday, two times on, on the Thursday, once on Friday, rest on Sunday. Daily schedule when we're on training camps and during season, two, two, rest, two, two, rest, no Sunday. Throwing two point, 
all on 3.110 feet lifting back squats, bench press, push press, sumo as mostly his favorite lifts. Day one, throw discus and lift squats and bends. Day two, throw 10 feet and throw push press and sumo. And here is his system. We do five by five, that is 25. In what we call base program, we do four by five, that is 20. We do three by five, that is 50. We do five by three, that is 12. We do four, three, two, that is 10, 3 by 3, that's 9, 3 by 2, that's 6. So you go from 25 reps down to 6 reps. So you basically repeat in the weight. Volume intensity regulation, this has always been his way of doing it. Done, never done 10, 12 reps with him because he was already big and very strong and thin. Intensity somewhere between 90 to 100 percent on the throwing, very often first drills, and we go all the way down to 60 percent in the weight room. We never go down to 30 percent because it doesn't work for throwers, even though it's theoretically right. <clears throat> so simply put, discus 12 to 60 throws a session depending on which period 3.1 10 feet lift this kind of reps and sets and then two fitness sessions that's his system and then I'm going to go into that the year plan of Gert Kenter I always write it the same way I always write it up like this because people understand and look at the colors here it's supposed to be yellow green and blue but in this program it gets a little bit gray somehow we, but we say this is blue this is seven periods a year two macro cycles 11 micro cycles 66 micro cycles seven active rest cycles so this here is the same as here, this here is the same as here, this here is the same as here. What does that mean? Why do I have a total periodization with the discus? It doesn't have any inverses. This is the year when he won the Olympic gold. It's because this is a very long time, and we actually compete maybe indoors in Vecco or something and take these weeks here that are totally 11 weeks I get something out of here and then we have four five six seven ten weeks here again and get something out of here and the most important is to get something out of here in relation to the Olympic Games or World Championship so I actually usually do it like this here something changed over to Finnish. I don't understand it, but you do. Uh, so I usually write the, 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 the system like that. And if we go down here, the red ones are active rest periods. Training camps, we didn't go on any. This was done in September, but we didn't go on any training camps because of the COVID. And then the competitions came under here. So it's always this way I write training program. And then on a monthly base, it looks like this. Here we start in October, November, December. A lot of yellow base. That means five by five in the weight room as an original. Maybe three to five to five by five, from 60 to 75, 80 percent of max. Then active rest during Christmas. Then strength during January, month of January, where we go more down to five, four, three, or on, on 
stay on 12 reps instead of 25 here, then active rest, and then some kind of peaking indoors or in the winter throwing cup in the area. And we get something out of this period. And also here, this one comes again here then. We do a lot of five by five here. Then here, max period on, on where we actually lift very heavy and we start to compete. And then peak here like we did here. This is mostly put up to see where is Daniel going to go home to Stockholm. Parents and hang out for a week and get active rested. That's the red part. So after the season, long rest here. And then one more that I'm going to then go into in deep detail. This is the period plan. So maybe before we continue, yeah. all those uh, like uh, when I don't train so much, I go to visit Turku to my mother, um, my grandma, or up to my cottage in the north, or I go to Stockholm. And here's a lot of stuff. Here's training methods and training forms, and it's too detailed to go through. So what is yellow? What is blue? What is green? It is here all in detail. And I put this together in September before we start. Here is green and here is blue. And here is active rest. All training methods, microcycles, exact dates when to do it, mesocycle, microcycle days, or on what to put up on each, on each day. Throwing exercises, lifting exercises, cardio, warm up, everything is put up, and all the numbers are here. And you don't see this, and because of that, I took, took it in detail in different pictures. And here it comes. We have two microcycles, seven periods. We have 11 mesocycles and 66 microcycles on those two day system. And then we have a base period, strength period, power speed period, double periodization like I showed you. And that means that the base periods are where we are lifting in this kind of system, two to one, throw, lift, see? We throw in the morning, lift in the afternoon, throw in the morning, lift in the afternoon, fitness. Throw in the morning, lift in the afternoon, throw in the morning, lift in the afternoon, fitness. And then in detail, we throw on Monday and Thursday discus. And then we throw standing throw, step on turn, static walk, pulls. We're going to show this a little bit to you later, even though you're not all throwers in here. And then on Tuesday and Friday, see, it's 72 hours in between, we throw the tool, 2.5 first, and then 3.1. Daniel, if you explain to them, what's the difference on those days? Like, how is it to throw the tool in relation to the disc? Well, throw the disc is more like a lot of technique, uh, rhythm, the entry tool is about horsepower, so you can transfer that to the entry tool to build up the speed of the release. And, uh, yeah. Or, so usually we do a lot of more technical work with the discus and much more horsepower just to throw hard with the tool. Okay. And then the lifting, and here is the details. If you take first this one here. Here I have a number, that's his PB in squats, 320 kilos, 215 or 210, 15 kilos in the bench. Estimated 230 has never done a single max step, but I estimate. Incline dumbbell press, 80, and then snatch pull, I, I go from this number, it's done 190 for three in the push press, that's 205 for a single. It's done 350 for five in sumo deadlift. 
as an estimated max of 400 kilos. And then press behind the neck, 135 to 140 kilos. And now you have to be, have to try to understand how I put this up. Monday, Thursday, yellow program, base program, where you build up base, you build up form. You don't do max strength. You build up form at the same time as you're throwing a lot. October, November, December. Again, March, April, May. Back squats on Monday, 72 hours later, front squats. Bench press on Monday, 72 hours later, incline bumper press. Same muscle group, different exercise. Same muscle group, different exercise. Sets and reps, three to five. I talked to you about um, that we do maximum five sets. That's the same here. Maximum five reps. And uh, three, you can do 92.5%. So you actually go, you can possibly go up to that heavy at the end of the third period during, during before Christmas. That is the max, and this is the minimum. So we stay in between this for those three months in October, November, December, and again in March, April, May. That means that we, we work in between 192 and a half kilos in the back squats up to 295 kilos, possibly for three. We're probably going to do that in December this year, maybe 300 for three already at Christmas. Okay. Bench press from 150 almost up to 200 kilos, and front squats and incline dumbbells. And if we then take Daniel, from your point of view, what's the difference doing back squats or front squats or bench press and incline dumbbell? From your point of view. Well, I just love the back squats. It's so great. You just put the bar on shoulders. A front squat is more more like a core exercise. So I do much more lighter in the front squat. Bench press is more. Yeah. But incline dumbbells, I, I love it more. But uh, the difference is, is a good question. <laughs> well, the difference is, like from your point of view, to do it is he loves the back squats. That's the mean, that means that he goes heavier on the back squats. Why do I want him to do front squats then? For the variation? Because it stimulates the leg work and the ab work and everything a little bit in a different way. It just gets in better shape. And then I do that on the yellow program, that is the base program, but I don't do it on the green and blue program, that are the power program and the competition program. Then he only does back squats. If you take then Tuesday and Friday, because we lift four times a week, you see, 72 hours in between, and Tuesday and Friday, we do snatch, pull, box, and then on the other one, sumo deadlift. Then push, press, and press behind the neck. So this here, same muscle or same exercise group as this one, even though this one is, is uh, Olympic lifting, and this one is Olympic lifting, and this is power lifting. Push, press, and press behind the neck. Reps are the same. Percentages, calculate it out from this. Then we stay in between this. If we then go on the green program, that is the maximum program that comes after the yellow, that is usually four to six weeks, same kind of system, and then we go into the throwing part. There we actually more or less take the tool away because here we want to ex uh, concentrate very much on being extremely strong in the weight room and then we throw the discus twice uh, pulls and very 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 hard slam means we're going to start to throw very very far during 
through this program, and at the same time being very, very strong. That's a hard combination, but then I have to take something out, and I take usually the tool out here to be able to throw first. And then if we take the lifting on this and comparing compare it to the yellow probe, then the pairing is suddenly that we do back squats both times and bench press both times. And uh, but I, I I don't do it here, but because I focus very much on those exercises here, and to do sumo deadlift twice a week, I think it's too much. Because of that, I have the snatch pull with the sumo, and I have the push press with the press behind the net. Because these are the exercises that I built everything on. This is not as important, except the sumo deadlift. Why is the sumo deadlift so important? I just love it. <laughs> Most of it. Okay. <laughs> so everybody thinks I'm a big believer in sumo deadlift. That ends with it. He just lost to do it. Am I going to take it away? No. I'm going to use it. You have to be very strong in your legs. And you see here three times one to five, up to 100% on this. And then another one light between 70 and 80 percent with more more left with more reps once a week once a week once a week once a week this is on the same and there you see then you can actually go up to max if you choose to do so very often we don't but then we estimate it in relation to to uh, uh, what the estimated max is and then if we take the competition program, then we throw much less. We go to meets. A lot of those slam session, that is hard session, can be meets, where you just throw six throws. And uh, otherwise, uh, we, we throw maybe 12 in relation to that we throw up to 60 in between uh, when we do the yellow ball. Um, and then we still have twice a week hard throwing during the season, one meet, one other that is maybe hard, and then the rest is technique, where he throws a lot of routine throws on approximately 90% of max. You don't do any drills, you do just a lot of throwing in relation to how he's supposed to throw during that time. You're not uh, changing the technique, you're just throwing. And then when he throws hard, that's even in a meet or in what we call a slam session. And then the lifting during the season. In a lot of sports, a lot of people take the lifting very much away or they take it extremely much down. And in our case, we don't. We more or less lift uh, uh, faster and less volume, and we only use the favorite exercises. That means back squats, back squats, bench press, bench press, sumo deadlift, sumo deadlift, one light, one heavy. That can be five, four, three on the on the lighter and then three by three on the heavier. But here, the strength is already there by the green program. The base is in the yellow program. The green program is, is the maximum strength. Here, it's all about this. And why can he peak after many weeks of throwing and competing in June? How can he peak? in August, it's because of the yellow book, because of the work that we did in October, November, December, March, April, May, then the green program in January, and June, and then the blue program, the speed and competition program in a very short season indoors and in a longer season outdoors. 
And then I use push press light, push press heavy, sumo deadlift, even in the season, sometimes combined with snatch pull, but very often sumo deadlift in the season. And what's the most important lift down here? 48 hours before competition. Uh, master level deadlift. Why is that? Yeah, I love it and I feel tension and I feel a lot of power in my body when I do two days before the competitions. I, I, I'm crazy strong when, when I go to the meets. I feel like a, instead of being a Volkswagen Golf, I feel like a Formula One two days after. <laughs> it is true actually when I do the double. So he believes in that. If I would talk to some, some theoretical guy, he would maybe say it's totally out. That's coaching. That's what we do. You have to listen to me. Yeah, I can do it. No way. But you would do Zoom or that 48 hours before? Absolutely not. So, individualization. A little more. Look at this week. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, let's say this is October, November, December. <clears throat> Always the same. Morning throw, evening lift. Squats and, and deadlift, squats and bends. Morning throw, evening lift. Uh, push press and, and uh, uh, snatch pull. Morning fitness, uh, cardio. Uh, Half an hour session, one hour session with all kinds of rehab, prehab stuff. Morning throw again, same as here. Morning throw again, same as here. Same muscle groups, different exercises at home, here, and then rest on Sunday. This system, everybody loves this system. Why is that? It's because of the setup. You are off on Sunday. You do this in the morning of Saturday. So from Saturday uh, lunch, you're done until 10 o'clock Monday morning. People love that at home, when they are at home. You do muscle group one and two, muscle group one and two, another one. Here and here, here and here. This throwing, same as this one, this one, same as this one. This works like crazy. And everybody that starts with it, they see, isn't this too much or too boring on Wednesdays and Saturdays? And then after a few weeks, everybody has to compete, continue to do this. There's only one person that has not liked it. And that was Joachim Olsen. But Joachim Olsen doesn't like anything. <laughs> so, uh, sorry, Joachim. <laughs> no, he's just a tough guy. He was a tough guy. He's the toughest guy I've ever dealt with by far. This guy is 10 times nicer than Joachim Olsen, but I have never learned so much from anybody like Joachim Olsen. Unbelievable personality. So, how do we do then on the queen? This is easy. Because we are not competing. But let's say we are in a green program in June and we are competing here. Morning throw, okay, we got two days here, total rest. And then he usually doesn't do a wake up call, some other people do it. And then he competes here. And then in regular week, he would then lift here. Yeah. And he can do that, but this here is the throwing session, like here. Here he maybe has a slam session, throws far. Technical session, no, no here, I mean. Here, and he lifts and lifts, same rhythm, okay? But suddenly there is a meet. But we, we need to continue to lift, because we are not peaking here. Just have to compete for the nation or for the club or whatever, Diamond League or something. But we are going to peak in August. 
That means that this session here is his throwing session like this one, and it's in the meat. Then we rest in the morning, and we do the lifting session, this one, we do it here, and then we do a regular second day. That means that we never miss a session, even though we are competing. And this is what I'm known for. Then, if we take the glue, uh, certainly there's a meat here. Morning throw, evening lift, okay, we got that in. Then we're going to do two days of rest that we always do before championships. Then we're going to compete here plus lift after the meet to be able to have a regular second day the day after and then rest on the third day. Because then this rhythm is the same as this with rhythm with the meet in, with me being smart and adjusting it in so we don't miss any sessions. This is my strength as a coach. It's much easier to go to get a beer after the meet. No, you're going to go with me in the weight. Is that going to be then heavy? No, but you have to do it because of the rhythm of the program. I'm not alone. I have this team around me. I had a similar team in uh, in uh, Estonia with Ke. I think of eleven people that work. Daniel, what do you think about those people? Yeah. And how important are they? Yeah, without them, I would have done one well road. So you have to have a great team, expert team around yourself. It's not only that you have your, like the Estonian is like a technical coach who does the programs. If we would be alone, like, I don't believe that we would have taken any medals. So you have to have a great team around you, like medical doctor, physiotherapist, massage, psychologists, every, like you see on the wall there. It's so important. I wouldn't be where I am without all the Estonians that work with me with Gert and then all the Swedes that are working with me with them. Totally impossible to do this alone. We don't have this kind of system build it up. Because we started with Gert Cantor with nothing, and we also started with Daniel Stoll with nothing. We just wanted to throw this. A lot of celebration when we came home. And then those three people are going to end up here and then we go in there. Why did it go so well? Why, why, why are these three, and Daniel and Simon, first and second? There is not a coincidence that Daniel Stoll won the discus and Gert Cantor won the discus and these kids with Daniel here did. Well, when they come to me, I ask them, do you want to work with me for eight to ten years? They love to compete, very often up 25 to 30 weeks a year, that's a lot. They actually never complain. And that's the truth. There's no whining. Never ever had three that are so extremely good on time. They're always 20 to 30 minutes before each session there. They never come late. They like to be in a group. They believe in me. And I believe in them. They work with the experts. They book their time with the psychologist. They book their time with the massage therapist. They are professionals. And they have made a decision with me to go the whole way. They actually have fun. I 
and interviewed for the last 30 years kids in different countries. And I've been a consultancy guy there interviewing a lot of people in Iceland, Denmark, Estonia, Sweden. And I always ask, why did you start to do sports? I've gotten 100% answer from everybody. Everybody has said, because it's fun. Isn't that great? We have a lot of fun. This is Daniel. Can you explain this one? Maybe in hints? I say to give it up. Yeah. So, the book here for me, it's so, only good. Kus on aga nagu hajatada, kui kaikid on politiika on meie hästi naised ja kaikid on nagu mõned tööjõga käida, ei saa niiku nagu kuka ei kuole, ei kuka ei nagu kuole, ei saa niiku, ei saa niiku, ei saa niiku, not life and death, aga see on niiku rock'n'roll, see on hauska. Ja aurigu mene aina on kuidagi üles toine päeva, siis jälgime ta, mis sul on huonad pisad või huonad reined, aga aurigu me aina nousem, siis päev on nagu nagu. Ja siit... Nii, kaikki mene kuidagi tõegi maale, see on see. Et see on mun, niiku mun rooli, aga ka siis quotes, nagu vahetan aina noorata. Varsinki, kus sul on hästi huonosti, no jätada, ma jätan ta, aga ta selge suorema ja sisuga. Aina, mul aina sisuga ära ära. Okei? Siis fun. So the guy of Sweet Rose, Arvid Koskinen, he's yeah, 25 percent film, but he did those pictures on, on Instagram in Doha, 2019. Like, like this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's it. We're going to have a practical session in 10-15 minutes in there. And then we have questions at the end of that session, or during that session. Because then I'm going to go more into this yellow, blue, and green stuff so you get it more into your system how to work with it on monday thank you